Hello everyone and welcome to this Wednesday's edition of Cooking in the Kitchen, Wacky Amy, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, today's recipe is a butternut squash stew. Uh, for those of you who were on here last week, you saw that uh, following the video on Thursday, I sent a um, newsletter with the recipe attached. If you did not receive it and you would like to be part of the mailing list, uh, every Thursday I'm gonna be putting a mailing list talking about a few of the tools that we're gonna be featuring today, as well as uh, the attachment of the recipe. So this recipe, like last week's, is part of the um, Taste Buds which is a subscription. This recipe was from December, so we are featuring a product that we launch in the month of December, and that is the Cinnamon Plus. So that's going to be uh, in this recipe today. I have to tell you, apparently Bristol is now checked out completely. Are you gonna come and get more treats and come and sit and talk to everybody? Oh, now he's coming back for treats, folks. Sit, come on. Um, when I chose this recipe, it certainly wasn't because of the title. I'm not a huge stew fan. Um, in fact, when I was growing up, my mother loathed stew. Um, so we didn't have a lot of stews. I do love beef and potatoes and carrots and obviously gravy. Um, but was I a fan of having it all together? Not so much. This recipe uh, is vegetarian. I do have in my quick cooker, so if you do hear some beeps, that's actually the chicken that's going to be finished. Because I'm going to serve this stew tonight um, with chicken, and later I am going to cook some quinoa to put it on top. So this recipe that you will get if you are part of the subscription, if you're not, send me a message and I totally will get you added to the list. But this recipe is um, vegetarian and I'm going to cook it that way. Uh, another thing I will note is I am the queen of changing some recipes. Um, this recipe calls for zucchini. I'm going to actually omit the zucchini. I'm not a huge uh, mushy zucchini fan. I love it on the barbecue. I love it in baking. I love it like I'm more of a grilled or um, but to have it in a stew to me isn't great. So I'm actually going to be adding some um, cremini and some shiitake mushrooms. Uh, and we'll get up to that. Also, the recipe asks that you can add cilantro. All of you who know me very well know that cilantro is to me. Cannot stand it. Therefore, I'm not adding it. You do you. You love cilantro, have at her. So, I am going to be featuring today a few products that I didn't talk about last week. That's kind of the key to this, is to talk about some recipes as well as some products that you might be interested in, you've never seen before, or possibly why I love them. So, one of the pans that I talked about last week is our wok stainless steel, and it is non-stick. This is a staple at my house. As soon as I wash it and put it back in the cupboard, it comes out again. Uh, yesterday, I used it when I made sweet and sour chicken. Today, I'm gonna to put the stew in it. Now, the recipe card calls for any large pan, any large pot, it's this really simple pan. Um, I love the wok because it is stainless steel, which allows it to be high heat, but non-stick, allowing that, uh, anybody who does have stainless steel knows that because of high heat, things can stick to it, but that's what you need for searing and such. But with the non-stick, it allows that just, it doesn't stick. and. It is a scrub free, you can scrub the surface in it. It is fabulous. So, uh, for those of you who do know my mystery bags and or were a recipient of the mystery bags, uh, somebody is actually getting a walk in the mystery bag. So that is super exciting. Um, there's a couple different uh, things about mystery bags this year. Um, and for anybody who knows people who might want a mystery bag, I'm thinking about offering one next week, doing a whole another 25 more bags. So if anybody is thinking they might be interested or would share it for the possibility of their other friends or other people to get a mystery bag, let me know that as well because this is my favorite time of year. It's almost like Christmas for me when I do the mystery bag. So um, 
What I have happening right now is in the oven, oh, there's the chicken, the chicken's in the quick cooker, like I said, that's not being added to this recipe anyway, that's just for the humans that live in this house that might want to have something besides the stew, which Kiara is not going to eat. So, the very first thing the recipe asked me to do was to preheat the oven at 400. I added a tablespoon of oil. I used, um, I just used extra virgin. Uh, you can use coconut or you can use avocado, whichever oil you have. It also asked for a half of a teaspoon of, like I said, the cinnamon plus, also a, a quarter of a teaspoon of salt and cayenne. Now, the cinnamon plus has in it cinnamon, obviously, nutmeg, allspice, orange peel, cloves, and ginger. And it is incredible. I have used, uh, this is my second jar. I, I don't know how I've used so much, but I did put it in my gingerbread this Christmas. I've used it in my applesauce, and I've used it in my stuffing for Christmas. Um, it's amazing because of the different, um, the added seasonings and such to it. So, uh, for those of you who don't have the Cinnamon Plus, it is no longer available, but you might be able to get your hands on some because you might know a consultant who might have some. The Cinnamon and the Cinnamon Plus are no longer available, but if you are an Epicure freak, uh, our friend Stacy Halliday here in the Guild, who is an amazing Epicure consultant, or if you've got your own Epicure consultant, the Apple Spice, uh, the Apple, I think it's called Apple Spice, um, is a great alternative to this as well. You can add a little bit of cinnamon, even more cinnamon if you want to. So I have taken the cayenne, the pepper, the, the uh, cinnamon plus, and some oil, and I added it into the large, uh, this is the batter bowl. I stirred it along with my silicone uh, spoon. This spoon comes in a three pack. I meant to talk about it last week. So it comes in a three pack. The handles are teak, they're beautiful and a dollar from these sales go directly to Food Banks Canada, helping support. And you know, those of us who have helped in the past uh, Food Banks Canada, I want to remind you that, that there are still people who are hungry even though the holidays are over. So any little bit that you can do, it's amazing. So all I did was I put my squash in here, I added the oil, the spices, and I stirred it up. The batter bowl is actually one of those staple features in my kitchen. I have had this batter bowl for almost 20 years. This is one of those original Pampered Chef products. Now, the squash that I used today, I had in the freezer. Um, so in the fall, when it was in season, all I did was cut it up because it was, it was everywhere and I love squash. I cut it up, uh, put it into chunks, and froze it. So a great opportunity for me to take some of my squash out. Again, like I said, I seasoned it in the batter bowl and then I added it to my baking paste sheet. So these are our sheet pans. Now this is the small sheet pan. All of you who do know me and know me very well know that I'm a stoner. I absolutely love my stones, could not live without my stones. Um, I'm a little crying right now because our stones are not available right now. Uh, they are in production thanks to uh, the kiln in, in the US that is getting up and running to get them up and going. So I have been talking about these sheet pans like ridiculous because they are beautiful, they cook so well. Uh, this week I made uh, peanut butter chocolate chip cookies on Blue Monday to give to some friends and neighbors and such. Um, and I cooked all my cookies on these sheet pans. The sheet pans come in three sizes. It has a small, a medium, which is considered the half sheet or a sheet pan, and then we have the half sheet. Now, I do want to tell you too, just a side note, these are baker quality, so they're very, very heavy. They would be what you would find in a baker's kitchen, a proper baker kitchen. So this is the half sheet pan. I just quickly want to talk about it. It comes as an individual sole pan, or you can get the set with the rack, and what's great about the rack is that you can cook, the rack can go in the oven, it's oven safe as well. Beautiful for putting something on like a roast. You would then, uh, you can put the roast, put the, the feet up, put the roast on the top, put your vegetables here, onions, peppers, potatoes, whatever, uh, and 
the drippings down would then season your veggies. It's beautiful. Uh, for those of you who might be vegetarian or vegan, same thing. You could put your seasoned um, tofu or your cauliflower. Again, seasoning down below. It's amazing. Uh, easy to clean. I cooked cookies on here a couple days ago. Oh, this one's wet, sorry, because I thought I was putting my squash on this one. It was, I didn't need that much squash. Uh, they, they, they wash up like a dream. They, they're beautiful. Um, and again, extremely heavy and nice quality. So um, just an FYI, again, I'm gonna be talking about a few products. So the very first thing was to cook the squash, which I did. And now we're going to uh, chop the onion and the zucchini, which I'm gonna chop up the onions. And then we're going to add it into the pan. So I'm just gonna leave this here for a second. I'm gonna talk um, while we cook along here. I've got a half an onion. I talked about our knives last week. All of our knives are lifetime guarantee, unless they are the coated knives, the coated knives. I believe are one year, but they could be three. I'd have to check for you. That was the steak, uh, the tomato knife. We have the tomato in both the professional and the coated. All of our professional knives are lifetime guarantee. Uh, I've had numerous customers tell me how amazing the knives are. Uh, the Santuco knife is my ultimate favorite, uh, if I haven't mentioned it before, which I'm sure I have. Uh, we have it in both the coated and in the professional. Again, professional lifetime. Both of them can be sharpened. It's, a, it's great. They're dishwasher safe. And I've had the customers who do have them come back and tell me how amazing their knives are. Um, and I, I kid you not, they are incredible. So we're gonna take a half an onion and we're gonna chop it up and I'm gonna put the half an onion in the manual food processor. Okay, again, love my manual food processor. Dishwasher safe, the blade is dishwasher safe. If you do wear out your blade, this is replaceable. It's great, it's got a little doodad in the center of the manual food processor. I'm simply just gonna put that in. I throw the onions in the food processor and then I put the lid on. Now, the lid is not dishwasher safe because you can hear that. It has inside um, a, a, a spring, it's spring loaded the handle. So that's not dishwasher safe. So all I do is I just run it under water and I just wipe the pan, the bottom, it's amazing. It also has a non-stick grip on the bottom so it will not fall off your counter. And for those of you who might have a step counter, watch, whatever, in your short steps, it's a great way to kind of get some more steps in. Just use your arm. Really easy, the blade is super sharp. So sharp it can chop onions, peppers, carrots, um, you can make salsa, guacamole and all this. The sucker's amazing. Look at how fast that onion got chopped. I just take the blade out, shake it off, onions chopped. What's also great about the manual food processor is it does have a lid. I can then, when I'm making things like egg salad or guacamole in here, I take the blade out, I can put the lid on, I can put the whole container in the fridge. I could, and I do, but because I use my manual food processor so much, I normally scoop it out because I need it clean because uh, the next recipe, I'm gonna need something. So there's my onion chopped up, okay? So we're gonna chop up the onion and the mushrooms. So the, the, the cremini mushrooms, I'm gonna leave kind of as a whole. They're a great little size. They're gonna add a different flavor to my recipe and that's okay. Um, it's only gonna be Dave and I eating this because the, the picky child who's still here from university is not going to eat this. Um, I am gonna use my quick slice. Again, those of you who know me well know how much I love this. Uh, $45, I'm simply gonna put my mushrooms in. Now all of my mushrooms I've pre-washed. Um, and I'm just gonna slice it down. Because I'm leaving the creminis, I thought I would, I would slice the shiitakes. So the shiitakes are just easily sliced, very fast. Again, you can do onions in this. You can do um, peppers, cheese of any kind. Super fast, super easy, dishwasher safe. I don't have time. I don't have time to fiddle fart with all this stuff. So I love the fast tools that will get me in and out of the kitchen and get the recipes done fast and easy. 
That's why I love Pampered Chef. That's what I love most about it. That the warranty. And for all of you who do know, I love to share. I love to share recipes. I love to share food. Um, and, and so if you need anything, know that as a consultant, that's what I'm here for. Obviously it's to help facilitate uh, products into your hands, but also recipes or ideas or anything that I can do to help you. So with that, we've easily sliced in seconds an onion and the mushrooms, and now we're good to go. This might still be hot. A little bit. I'm gonna shut the oven off. Okay, so I'm now going to turn the uh, oven on or the stove top on, and I'm gonna heat up the onion. Okay, so I'm adding some oil to the bottom of the pan. I talked about our measuring spoons last week. We've got two different versions of the measuring spoons. So this is, both of them are tablespoons here. This is the black part here would allow you to change the, the depth. Therefore, it goes from two teaspoons right up to one whole tablespoon, where this is a tablespoon and then half a tablespoon and such. These have a little on the bottom, um, a little shelf essentially that you can then sit on the counter and pour into if you want. Uh, I use all of them. So uh, do I have a favorite? I tend to use these as my go-tos. I have two sets of these. Um, I use them in the laundry room as well. Anybody who does their own powder detergents or do, does um, like a healthy alternative to uh, a store-bought, uh, I that's why actually why I bought a second set that I keep I keep in the laundry room and I keep another set here in the house. Okay, so I've added the oil and it asks me to add the onion and the onion and the garlic are going to go in here and start. They, it says to cook it until softened, which we're going to hear a little bit of the sizzle. I am using the uh, infamously famous mix and scrape. This is the petite, this is the medium, and then we have it right up to the large and every size in between. These are five year guarantee, dishwasher safe, and just an FYI, anybody have any products that might be getting yellowed or green, depending if you use a lot of pesto, or orange with carrots, or squash, things that, that color naturally. I just want to let you know that anything, even your cutting boards, even if it's not pampered chef, I'm not saying it has to be, but anything that's discolored, did you know that if you put it outside in the sunshine and you leave it for about four or five hours, the sunlight will actually pull out the coloring and get your kitchen products and such back to its regular, uh, to back to the regular color. So last week I talked about my teak spoons. They are my go-to. This is once again the corner one. I don't know why I like it so much, probably because I can get in there if I need to. So I'm adding the onion. I have to tell you, just a little side note. The kitchen right now smells amazing because the squash has cayenne, and like I said to you, the cinnamon plus, and the salt, and the smell in the kitchen, it's, it's like fall goodness. Um, it is seven, minus seven out right now, feeling like minus 15. And so we've got that, even though here in, in Toronto, the sun is out and it's beautiful, and I'm about to go for a hike with my girlfriends after. Um, it's beautiful out, but it's very cold, and I'm feeling the cold today, even in the house. So this, to me, is one of those dishes that I get to come home to tonight. Um, it's beautiful, warm, hearty. I can eat it in a bowl, put quinoa. I can eat it in a bowl with, with the chicken if I want to. You can add shrimp, tofu or just the beautiness of this. As well, after a couple days, if we're getting a little sick of it, I'm gonna then add it to my blender, and I'm going to add a soup, I'm gonna add soup, uh, blend it, and make it into a soup. I can add some potatoes to it and make it a little thicker, um, and just to kind of change it up, and we're gonna top it with some um, cashews, which is awesome as well. Again, a little bit of extra protein. So in the pan right now, I've got the obviously the onions oh it's asked for me to add some more salt it's actually asking for a quarter of a teaspoon so i'm just going to give it a shake 
These are pepper, salt and pepper grinder. The, both, both the salt and the pepper are uh, Pampered Chef. Uh, FYI, this is another bag. Uh, Somebody is getting the salt and pepper grinder. So super excited with salt and pepper because um, I thought you can't give away. I, when I do my mystery bags, I love to theme them. So everybody's bags are always themed and very fun. And I try to uh, theme them and get them according to what everyone would like. Um, if I don't know you directly, I normally call the people, your people, and kind of ask what you might like so that you do get some favorites in there. And I do put fan favorites, and this is one of my favorites. So I'm going to add the salt to that, and then I'm going to add some garlic. It's asking for two cloves of garlic. For those of you who don't have the garlic press, Pampered Chef garlic press is incredible. Uh, this is my original garlic press. I've had it now for 20 years. It's as old as Lauren. What I love most about it is I do not need to peel my garlic at all. I'm throwing in just the two pieces, the two cloves, not peeled. I can uh, squish that garlic right over top of the pan. And what fabulous is, there is the peeling, okay? Didn't have to worry. Didn't have to fiddle fart around with anything. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. The garlic press itself is dishwasher safe. And I will note that it does come with a little cleaning brush. Little tiny brush, it should sit here. So for any of you who have girls, daughters, nieces, cousins, anyone with girls, uh, you might have had Barbies in your life. Well, I have two daughters and yes, I had Barbies in my life. Barbie brush. They also had uh, Polly Pockets, Polly Pocket brushes, all these little teeny tiny farty little bits. This too had a fitty farty little bit, which was the brush. I long lost it, and so I just scoop out the bottom, the peeling, which is great. Easy, very simple to use. I love fresh garlic. I just want to let you know, for those of you who might not have the garlic press, not only is it very economical, it's under $30, but I will let you know that if you buy garlic in the jar, and the minute you open that, two weeks after you open it, your garlic has lost its flavor. So you might be thinking, oh, I'm saving all this money because I'm buying a big one from Costco. Two weeks later, it, the freshness is gone. So it's actually better for you to buy the garlic press or a garlic press. I'm telling you right now, you're going to buy one garlic press if you buy mine. And um, just because, like I said, it's 20 years old. Um, but get yourself a good garlic press so it just seals in your flavor of your garlic. That's the key there. So we're adding that. We're going to add some more cinnamon plus. We're going to add another quarter of a teaspoon. Uh, what's great about our teaspoons is we have a half, we have a quarter, we have an eighth, which is hard, which is a strange one. Uh, not all teaspoons now come with, with a one eighth. Uh, it's amazing. So I'm just putting that in the pan. So onions, garlic, the cinnamon plus. Again, the house smells incredible. Uh, I'm then going to stir in the, a can of chickpeas, tomatoes, and like I said, the zucchini. So I'm going to add the mushrooms. And I wanted to not pre-open the cans just because I wanted to show you guys the can opener. So the can opener is, once again, one of those products that I bought years and years ago. In fact, I even have my original one. It used to be blue. It's now white. Uh, guaranteed, I'm going to say it's either three or five years again. But the reason is that it is a um, non, oh, how do you say, a smooth edge is the word I'm trying to find. So it's a smooth edge can opener. Okay, don't do that, okay? That's what I didn't want to happen, was to throw the chickpeas all over the counter, good times. Um, but I did want to show you that, normally that doesn't happen, and I'll side note that, okay? Let me get the tomatoes going here. I wanted to show you how strong this can opener is, okay? It's gripped on to the point that it will not fall off. Um, and like I said to you, smooth edge. So you can see there with the chickpeas, I'm running my finger over it. The can itself is easily no cutting. 
Really great, again, to get those little people that you might have in your life in the kitchen. A great opportunity. Again, clipped on there tight. How does it come off? You turn it the opposite way. It's still on. We got those little teeth. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. This little metal teeth. There's a button here that I'm pushing and it allows the teeth to open and close. I just grab the edge of the can and the lid comes off, okay? So we're adding the crushed tomatoes to the pan. It asks for any crushed tomatoes. I actually added a spicy red pepper because this recipe is a, a bit spicy. It's a cayenne pepper and because I knew Kiara wasn't gonna eat it, I thought I'm just gonna add extra spice to it. Dave and I love heat, love spice. And again, right now in this weather, and I'm not complaining, we don't have snow, I've, we've had to shovel once, beautiful to drive, beautiful to walk, I mean there's not much else we can do right now in the pandemic uh, but walk, so I'm super thankful, so I'm not complaining, but it is a little colder, uh, and therefore I like warm dishes like this, even the spicy dishes. So I am going to rinse off the chickpeas, even the ones that I threw all over the counter, and I'm going to show you, last week I showed you the um, fine mesh strainer, which I adore. Now these come, this is the other set of uh, strainers that we have, and it's a three-piece piece mesh set. This is the smallest. Uh, this is the medium, which has the spinach in it. And then we have a larger one. So this is in around two cups. This is a four cup. And I believe the, uh, the last, the uh, other one is an eight cup. Um, so great for pastas, veggies. Um, I normally, with the small one, when I get grapes, I normally clean them and take them off the stems and I just leave them in here on the counter and we just pick apart them. So I'm just gonna add the chickpeas to this. I'm gonna rinse the chickpeas, even the ones I threw on the counter. I'm so glad that I always start off with a uh, a fresh counter that I have disinfected because I just never know when I might throw stuff all over myself or the counter. Uh, and apparently today, uh, chickpea juice all over. So I'm just gonna give the chickpeas a good rinse. And what's great is that, like I said, it's, it acts, the, the strainer is amazing. Not as thin as the last one, so because of that, um, it's not that this one isn't as great for things like quinoa, rice, uh, any of those fine. That's why I had talked the last week about the fine mesh. So here you can see it's just got the chickpeas, the tomatoes, the onions. It's already smelling beautiful because of the cinnamon plus, which has, like I said, the cloves and the cinnamon, the everything along. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh and juice all over my counter, good times. Okay, did save the recipe card though, Whew. All right, so with that, we stir, we bring that to the boil, which it is already actually boiling. So I'm just gonna reduce the heat. That's all it's asked to do now is reduce the heat and let that simmer. After that, I am actually just going to add the um, squash to it. And then I'm gonna add the spinach, which, so I'm gonna give this another couple minutes and then I'm gonna add that. This is a really, really simple uh, recipe to actually also add different vegetables to it. Um, at my house, a staple vegetable that I know, good Lord, a staple vegetable that I know Kiara will eat uh, and loves is broccoli. Um, so I always have broccoli in the house. This recipe would be beautiful with any vegetable. Chopped up carrots, zucchini, like, it, like the recipe actually calls for. Really simple recipe um, and really simple ingredients that you can add to it. And like I said, the word stew kind of scared me because I am not a huge stew person. Um, but once I read the ingredients and what was going to be put into this beautiful stew, uh, I was all for it. So I'm now going to add the mushrooms as well. And from there, 
I am going to add, it actually also calls for some vegetable broth, which I have got ready. Just stirring the mushrooms around. So it asks for one and a half cups of vegetable broth, which I had prepared. So a couple of our measuring uh, utensils again. Uh, this, these are our silicone prep bowls. They come in a three piece. It's a three cup, a two cup, and a one cup. They come nest, nested together. There's lids for each of them. And because they're silicone, they are also oven safe, microwavable safe, and dishwasher safe. As well as these are the easy read measuring cups, which I have showed you guys before. For those of you who have popped on, a little harder for me to show you. But when we're measuring, we tend to look this way. You know, we're not trying to figure out what it is. So it's great to kind of put onto the counter and pour into because I can, I can see it's actually looking at me. It's fabulous. This comes as a four cup, sorry, four cup, two cup, one cup. And we also have an itty bitty little petite one as well that does tablespoons, which is great even for a recipe like this because this recipe called for two tablespoons of oil. Um, one of the tablespoons went on to the, uh, for the squash in the beginning. The other tablespoon was gonna go later into the pan. This would have been very convenient for me to have measured with this, poured one out and poured another out. Uh, again, those bakers, cooks, chefs uh, in the kitchen that are always using the tools and having to wash and remember where everything is, uh, it's great to have different pieces and such. So this now, you, like I said, it's just all of a sudden now, it's just asking us to stir the tomatoes, chickpeas, zucchini slash for me mushrooms. Um, I added the broth, bring it to a boil, reduce the heat, and then just let it simmer. So I'm just gonna let it simmer, and I'm gonna add the squash, okay? So I'm just gonna take, take my tongs, these are our small chef tongs. They are, uh, there's a, I should just mention, there's a little button here. I call that again another doodad. When I flip it up and down, it's sliding down. These stay locked in your um, drawer. Anybody who has a drawer like I do uh, with all my tools, I do have my turnabout right here on my stove that's got my key tools, but all my other ones are in a drawer. Um, nothing is worse than when you go to open the drawer and something is lodged in it. You won't have your tongs get lodged in it because the little doodad keeps them closed. So when I'm turning it down, they open. They're silicone, so they are non-stick. They're not going to bother with something like my sheet pan and scrape it. What's also great about the silicone on the end is it's good to 725 degrees Fahrenheit, which means I can use them on the barbecue, and I do. Um, I don't have anything very small on me, my butt, my mouth, my hair, um, but my hands are a bit small, so I don't like those big barbecue tongs and trying to, uh, trying to use those. So I find having our, these are the large pair, and again, just comparing it to what the small pair look like. Um, I like these on the barbecue. I can manage them, I can use them, uh, I can saute, I can, um, here in the house, marinate, uh, take the whole dish and everything else and go right on to the barbecue and not have to worry about a second or a third set of tongs, which is awesome. So I'm not sure if you guys can see how beautiful this is. I want to make sure I don't spill. Um, it smells incredible. This is going to be a bit spicy. It has, it only has a half of a teaspoon of cayenne. Um, but it also has the, the tomatoes that I bought, the crushed tomatoes. Uh, this is the spicy red pepper. It's considered a medium heat, so it's going to give it a different little kick. Um, and like I said, you can, you can minimize that. The recipe also asks, uh, says if you want to omit the cayenne, absolutely. And this recipe also says if you want to add, like I had said to you before, cilantro, you, you do you. This is definitely not cilantro. Um, and now I'm just going to add the spinach. Now, the spinach is pre-washed. 
um, but I did wash it, which is again, this is in the medium um, mesh colanders. And I'm just gonna throw the spinach in and this is done. Um, any stew, like any stew, you're just gonna let this go. Um, the recipe also calls for uh, to top it with, so it says to gently stir in the squash and then to fold in the spinach, which I'm just using the tongs just to kind of get it in there. And then it says to serve over quinoa, which I will cook later, and I have chicken. So you can use this as a side dish, you can use it as the main dish, you can uh, pretty much do whatever you want, obviously. Uh, quinoa, rice, any uh, cauliflower rice, anything like that, or for those trying to stay away from carbs, you might even want to just put it over top of a bed of lettuce. This will be a beautiful cold. Um, I The thought of this right now for tonight is already warming me. Um, and it says for a protein boost, you can add more protein by adding roasted shrimp, uh, meatballs, tofu. Uh, also, once you serve it, they're suggesting to add um, cashews, which I have cashews out to serve later. We also have, uh, Pampered Chef also has as a single, so a single purchase or as a subscription, uh, pea protein and kale and fiber. And I'm just gonna quickly grab them and I'll quickly talk about it before I sign off. These are products that you too could add into your dishes, uh, adding extra protein. So the pea protein is in a packet here. Inside has a little scoop. Same with kale and fiber. I add kale and fiber every day to my yogurt. Yes, it turns my yogurt green. No, it doesn't have a flavor. I'm just getting extra fiber. I then add pea protein also to my yogurt parfait. That way I'm getting an extra boost of protein. So if you are omitting any proteins out of this completely, if I would suggest maybe adding a bit of a, a protein. Your kids, for those of you who might have picky children or grandchildren, they're not gonna taste it. Um, even the kale and fiber, like I said, it will turn things green, but it doesn't have a flavor. So I've actually added the kale and fiber once when I made chocolate chip cookies. Um, I did it actually over um, in March for, uh, not last March, because we couldn't go anywhere. Um, so the March before, I added it to chocolate chip cookies and gave them out as uh, shamrock cookies. No one was the wiser. They happened to be green. They had kale and fiber in them. So, um, so for those of you who are not on the mailing list and will have not, didn't receive the, the new mail last week, let me know. I will add you to the list. This is gonna come out tomorrow, which is the recipe to our beautiful squash stew. You can see there, it's gorgeous. You can add or omit anything that you might want. Um, the house smells amazing. And what a beautiful time of the year to still be able to get squash and to still be able to enjoy this nice, beautiful, warm, hearty meal. So thank you all for coming and see you soon.